Hey guys, this is Post Production Pi. This past week on the Esteron Facebook page, Corbin Bielski asked, Do you guys have a tutorial on editing for high end fashion? A flattened look, usually with a tint to it, or a dreamy ethereal look like W Magazine or Flaunt Magazine. Now we're going to cover the look of the Flaunt Magazine shots later on. It's a little more in depth, probably going to be a two or three part series. In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you guys how to pull off the W Magazine shots in Photoshop. All right, so here is the W Magazine shots that he linked to. It's called Duel in the Sun, and this was shot by Jean-Baptiste Mondino, which, by the way, would probably be a great name for our mannequin. All right, so this look is basically a, a nice, high-key, uh, vintage-type look where we have kind of muted colors, uh, great detail, a little bit less lowered contrast, and a backlighted image. And part of the look is really achieved by just the lighting itself. And you can see how basically in every one of these shots there's a heavy, heavy backlight uh, in all these images. So we selected an image from our uh, kind of portfolio that has a heavy backlight that we can kind of use to uh, create a similar effect. But really to perfectly mimic this look you're going to want to mimic the lighting effects as well. But we're not talking about lighting, we're talking about post-production. So let's get to it. We're going to open up this shot. It's the raw file. You guys can download this exercise file from the article itself. Double click to open it up in ACR. And we're just going to make a couple brief edits. I'm going to keep this window open so we can use it as a reference point and just kind of see the overall look. So what I want to do is just make a couple of minor adjustments just to kind of, I want to post reduce it correctly because we're going to actually get this effect through layering and stuff and that way we can control saturation later. So I don't want to necessarily kill the saturation in ACR because then I won't have control of it once I'm in Photoshop. So let's just post reduce it so it looks about right. It's a little bit on the green side. I'm going to take up the pinks just a little bit and then warm it up just a tiny bit. We'll brighten it to about 60. I'm going to add some recovery just to kind of pull down the dress a little bit. The dress is a little bit too bright. All right, and then I think that's about good. We don't need it to be perfect from here. Uh, what I do want to do is quickly fix this curtain right here. And if you guys remember the previous tutorial on editing in Lightroom, we're going to use the same technique that we would do in Lightroom. We're just going to pull up our adjustment brush. We're going to set exposure all the way to plus 4, brightness to plus 200. I'm shrinking the size to 13. We're going to do feather flow and density all at 100. And then uh, we're going to just paint over this area right here. All right, now that that's gone, let's just double check. Yeah, it's all gone. OK, so let's go back to our basic settings. And I want to do one other thing. I, I noticed a little bit of darkening on this arm right here, kind of like a natural vignette where there's the light is falling off. I want to reverse that. So I'm going to go to my lens corrections. And then we're going to go to the lens vignetting. And I'm going to pull up the amount. So just kind of reverse that. Otherwise, when we when we do this effect on it, it's going to have this kind of nasty darkening uh, side on our, on our skin, which isn't going to look that great. So let's pull in the midpoint a little bit to make the effect a little more subtle and to kind of deepen how far it extends into the image. And that's great. We're good right here. I'm going to hit open the image. And now we've brought the image into Photoshop. All right, so now that I'm in Photoshop, the first thing I'm going to do is create a vibrance adjustment layer. So let's add that. And what we're going to do is we're going to pull down our vibrance, but not our saturation. This is going to basically mute the skin tones, but it's going to leave some of the color intact. So I'm going to take it down to, let's say, let's go around negative 40. I think that looks about right. If you can't get it right on, you can always just type it in right here. So we'll go to negative 40. And that gets our skin tone actually fairly close to what you see in this image right here. Um, we still have some color like in the hair and in other areas, but the skin tone is where I want it to be. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is add a curves adjustment layer. And with this, basically, I want to pull down the midtones. I want to kind of like even out the color of the skin. We're going to brighten it up in a second, but I'm first going to pull it down just across the board so that it kind of flattens out the tone of her skin. And then we're also going to uh, raise up the shadows just a little bit to kind of bring out a little bit more contrast in the scene. All right, so once you've adjusted curves, now we're going to add an exposure adjustment layer. And with this, I just want to raise the exposure a tiny bit to brighten up the skin. And then I'm going to use a little bit of a positive offset to kind of flatten out the contrast just a little bit more. Go a little bit more exposure. And then we're going to use a little bit of gamma correction to pull in the shadows just a little bit. And that's great. I'm going to just make a couple final tweaks here. Just a little bit more there. And we're good. All right, so from here I want to merge all of these existing layers onto a new layer. And how we're going to do that is going to hold Alt, Control, Shift, and E. Uh, for a Mac, that would be, let's see, Option, Command, Shift, uh, E. And what that's going to do is going to take everything, put it into a new layer. That way we can make adjustments to this layer and still have the original intact. So just kind of easier for your workflow. What we're going to do is we're going to call this a sharpening layer. 
and then we're going to go up to our filter pull down sharpening we just need to enhance some of the detail because you'll notice that in this image that we have on the right side you can see additional detail in like the skin and stuff like that which we don't see in our shot right now so we're going to enhance just the overall detail of this image just a bit uh, let's see where we want our radius I'm going to pull the radius up we'll go up to about five and then we'll pull the amount up to about I think about 85 percent somewhere around this range is about good and we're going to hit OK. All right, now from here what I want to do is create another sharpening layer, but I only want it to affect like areas of the hair, maybe the earrings, the necklace, nothing else really. So what we're going to do is we're going to create another sharpening layer. We're going to jump this to a new layer just by having it selected, hitting Control J or Command J on a Mac. And then I'm going to double click this. We're going to call it uh, Hair and Detail Sharpen. And what we're going to do is we're going to switch the blend mode here to overlay. It's going to have a funky effect to begin with, but what we're going to do is this is going to be a high pass sharpening. Let's zoom in to 100%. I'm going to hold spacebar and scroll up till I can see her hair. This is the area that we want to sharpen. And what I'm going to do is go to filter. We're going to go to other and do high pass. This is a high pass sharpening effect. So what we're going to do from here now is just kind of enhance this sharpen look. I don't want a black fringing look on the edges. So I'm going to take it up to about We'll go up to about four. I think that's about right. We're going to hit OK. And now I'm going to zoom out. So let's go back to our, what well, we have, 16 something percent. We'll go 16 percent. Let's zoom in a little bit more. OK, so now we have the high pass sharpening, but it's affecting everything. It's affecting the entire image. So I don't want it to be over the entire image, just over the hair. I want to leave her skin very soft. So what we're going to do is hold Alt. And I'm going to click on the mask. And then when you hold Alt, it's going to fill in a mask that's completely black. Meaning from here, all we got to do is brush in where we want the detail to appear. So I'm going to select my brush. We're going to hit X to invert my color. So white, we can see through. And then we're going to zoom in and just kind of cover the hair detail a little bit. And you'll see that it just has a very nice, subtle, enhancing effect over the hair. Uh, just to kind of make it pop a little more. I'm trying to kind of mimic this look where you see a little bit of quite a bit of detail in the hair up here as well as they probably do some in the clothes on some of these other shots as well. So on if you had like clothes where you want to enhance detail you do the same thing. Let's hold, uh, let's hit backspace so we can see our mask. Uh, I'm going to remove it off the edges just so we don't have any fringing. And then uh, and make sure by the way that your hardness is actually set to zero because you want the you want where it fades off, you want it to be very soft. You don't want to have you want to have a nice feather look, not a hard edge. All right, let's do the same thing with the necklace, or sorry, the earring and then the necklace. I'm going to go back to white, paint that in. And now the necklace, go white, paint in the necklace. I'm just kind of shrinking it as I go through, just dragging it down. All right. And we can if we want just enhance the uh let's say we want to enhance the eyelashes a little bit and that's about right. I don't want to I don't want to enhance those wrinkles, so I'm going to go back to my brush and switch to black, just paint around the wrinkles a little bit. Okay, I think that's good. Let's hit backslash again to remove that overlay and now we are set. All right, so the last final touch would be is if you guys want to, say, add a little bit of color into certain areas. Let's say we want to add a little more of, of her original hair color back to her hair. What we do is just duplicate that background by hitting Control J while the background selected. I'm going to drag up to the very top. I'm going to do the exact same thing where we hit Alt and then hit the mask to create a black mask. And what we're going to do is we're going to select the blend mode here to just be color. And so I'm going to zoom in. Whoops, that's flipped up to a different... There we go. We're going to have our mask selected, paintbrush, and we're going to zoom in by holding Alt and scrolling in. And we're going to, again, just kind of paint over her hair area just to add a little bit of color back into the image. Remember, white reveals, black conceals. So let's add a little bit of this color. It doesn't matter if it's not quite perfect over the edges where there's white in the background because it's not going to show up. But over the skin tones, you do want to get it pretty close to accurate. All right, because we don't want to make the skin tones look any different in color. Okay, now we're going to hit backslash again, and now we can kind of control the color of that by just adjusting the opacity of this layer. So you can see it's a very subtle effect, but you can see that we're adding color back to her hair. And I want to leave it at 100% because I want that original color to be there. All right, now last thing, guys, this is kind of optional. This image does have a flare. Now, we didn't shoot this shot to have a pronounced flare, so if we want one, we need to add one. So let's do that now. You guys can choose whether you want to add it or not. If you do, select the very top layer. We're going to hold, uh, hit Alt, Control, Shift, E again to merge everything into one new layer again. Call this layer our flare layer. 
we're going to go to the filter menu. We're going to go to render. Then we're going to go lens flare. And what we're going to do is we're going to put this lens flare up into the top left side of the lens. Because I don't want, basically what I don't want is these specular highlights that you see right there to be over the skin area. So we're going to put it up in the top left. I want to use a 35 millimeter prime lens type because I feel like it gives us the best effect. And we're going to pump up our brightness to about, we'll say about 185% is good. I just want to make sure that, that none of the specular highlights are over the skin. And I don't really see any. If it's over the dress, that's fine. Um, I just don't want it to be over the skin area. I'm going to hit OK. And there we go. We have our added lens flare effect. And now we can save out. We are done, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial on how to create kind of that vintage dreamy look in W Magazine as shot by Jean-Baptiste Mondino. Thanks, guys.